Hey everyone, so I'm Future here, and today I want to show you how to do program changes with any MIDI controller. So I recently bought this um, Nano Control by Korg, and I looked at the specs, and there was a lot of interesting options in their uh, their little software thingy. And I thought this would be a cool controller to do some cool things with, like changing, for instance, uh, instruments in a stream or something like that. Uh, Problem being that a gig performer, which I use with most uh, VST hosts, will use program changes for that. And looking at this little uh, thing here, I figured there is an assign type. I could probably change that to program change and be done with it. Sadly, it doesn't work like that. So even though there's a lot of very cool controls, a lot of customizability, program change isn't one of them which I think is a missed opportunity. And I feel like that's a software thing that could definitely happen. But for the time being, it is an option, so we need a way around this. So what I have set up here is the way to do this. So let me get this out of the way. Uh, in the bottom, you see my cork. Uh, on the top left, you see my uh, instance of Kick Performer. And on the top right, you see a program called Midiox. Uh, and that's the program we're going to use. So first for the setup, I will not go too much in detail because this is very specific to the program you're using. But in the case of a gig performer, what I have done is I've made a rack uh, with three switches, which switch on and off the uh, outputs of different VSTs, or the inputs, excuse me, of different VSTs. So they filter out the MIDI. Um, and these are linked to variations. So every variation has its own set of on and off switches. It's not the neatest way to do it probably, but it works fine. And, and every variation you can set a uh, program chain. So this is program chain two. Uh, this is program chain five, because the numbering is weird. <laughs> That's six. It is program change number seven. And I want to assign these to these knobs up here. Uh, and this is where MIDIOX comes in. So first make sure that whatever needs to receive the program change is actually set to receive your program changes. So in my case, uh, all the MIDI is routed to Gig Performer. I will do a video on routing MIDI to multiple programs in the future, but for now, just make sure this is your controller. Download and install MIDIOX, very small, very old school program, and make sure that in the options you go to devices, which isn't captured for some reason. Okay, that's mildly annoying. Let me see if I can. There we go. That's devices windows, so and make sure that your input is set to your uh, nano control, and your output is set to whatever your output is. If you're using just one controller, one program, that's going to be nano control as well. Now we can actually test this uh, by pressing a button. So if we press a button and we make sure that our MIDI aux is back in view, yep, there we go. You will see that there are now control changes being captured. Um, but that's useless because we are looking for program changes. So what we need to do now is convert this data into the appropriate program change. And for that, we need this little uh, MIDI data mapping thingy. Now it's handy to make a print screen of the uh, Cork software because the Cork software cannot be run next to uh, any other program. So you need to close down everything that uses MIDI, open the Cork controller, make a little print screen and take notes of uh, the buttons you want to assign. So in my case, that's the stop buttons. Um, so that's CC 32, 33, 34, 35. Those controls are the controls I want to change. So I make a note of that. And I know where I want to change them to. So now we can go to the mini mapping tool. And I need to once again point my OBS to the mini mapping tool. Oh, that's the wrong one though. I need this one to become the mini mapping tool. Here we go. The mini mapping tool is pretty straightforward. Um, you may need to make sure it's on. <laughs> That's a very important step. And then you can simply insert a row. 
And you're going to say, I want to take... Oh, of course, it doesn't show this as well. That's fairly annoying. All right, give me a second. There we go. <laughs> That's better. So we need to uh, insert a row. And now we need to tell what needs to happen. So we want to have any channel input. The event type is a uh, control message. And now we want to know which control message is going to change. So in my example, I had uh, control 32. So I'm going to say the minimum control is 32. The maximum control is 32. I don't care about the velocity of the control. And I want to output this as a uh, program change. With the program change number, uh, whatever the number is you need. Now on Interesting thing to notice that for some reason uh, there's a small difference between Gig Performer and uh, whatever MIDIOX does. So every number needs to be minus one for some reason. So instead of two, we need to use one. Instead of uh, five, we need to use four. Six becomes five and uh, seven becomes six. So if I want to change this to two, I need to place uh, two here and I can just save it and we'll make a new row. So we do this for every program change we want and every control we want to change. So MIDI 32 to 35, we change the program change to 27. They are all subtracted, subtracted one. We can turn this on and we can give it an OK. And now if we push any button here. On my cable is jank as F. There we go. You can see that we are sending program changes instead of control messages. Let's move this slightly up. Now if we turn this off, we get control messages. Gig Performer does nothing. And if we turn this on, we can change the program. So that's a neat little trick. If you have a controller like, for instance, this that doesn't do uh, program changes, you can use MIDIOX um, to convert a control to a program change and use it that way. Now, there's a lot more that MIDIOX can do, which I will be covering once we get into MIDI routing a little bit later on. But that's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, and if there are any questions, you can drop them down below. I can't tell every specific of every controller or every piece of software, but I will do my best to help you out. Um, I would say have a great day.